You still think you are privileged and superior. 抖音 I'm not kidding. Not over exaggerating. That's right. If you are hot, watch out. If you look weird, no dice. If you don't look like what the Chinese government wants to represent China to the world, good luck making any money off of live streaming. You look like this, you're toast. Like this, done. The Chinese government rules are now in place. But they are super, super weird, and I was so surprised to see how dumb and overreaching this actually was. And I'm talking about the Chinese government here. This is not a government that has been known for its transparency and、uh, reasonable laws. But you're gonna want to watch to the end of this entire video to see how insane this actually is. Bad habits don't have to be hard to break. It can even be enjoyable. Now I'm not talking about some voodoo magic hypnosis mind control device here. We're talking about our sponsor, Fume, and how they look at the problem in a different way. Fume is an innovative, award-winning flavored air device that does just that. Instead of electronics, Fume is completely natural. Instead of vapor, Fume uses flavored air, and instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses all-natural, delicious flavors. You get it. Instead of bad, Fume is good. It's a habit that you are free to enjoy. It makes replacing your bad habit easy. Fills the void in a natural, guilt-free way. I tried the crisp mint and orange vanilla flavors, and I was super surprised at how flavorful they were. The crisp mint was excellently refreshing, and the orange vanilla was more of a delicious treat, kind of like a creamsicle, much more delicious than I was expecting. The feel—it's super well weighted. It feels premium in your hand, and it's really fun to fidget with. The beautiful wood, the natural look—it's a really, really premium product, and I loved using it. Fume has served over 150,000 customers and has thousands of success stories. And there's no reason that that can't be you. Join Fume in accelerating humanity's breakup from destructive habits by picking up the Journey Pack today. Head to tryfume.com/lawai or scan the QR code on your screen and use the code. Lawai to get 10% off when you get the Journey Pack today. That's tryfum.com and use the code Lawai to save an additional 10% off on your order today. Thanks. Now everybody knows TikTok. You know that short-form media app that makes sure that you waste hours of your life every single day scrolling through specifically algorithmically tailored content that you are sure to immediately forget. Just in case you thought you were in danger of learning something useful. Anyway, on TikTok, at least here in America, you can, within reason, upload whatever you want, unless it's critical of the Chinese government, of course. But that's a whole other topic for another time. Anyway, in China, there's a new set of rules. See, I told you guys all about the social credit system before. You know that system in China that. Certain cities are rolling out. You have a grade-based system based on your behavior. So basically, for example, you start at a triple A level, A A A, with over a thousand points. But if you do something like jaywalk or protest, or you petition the government because you have a problem with how things are running, you lose points. Your grade can drop all the way down to a D tier person, and then you're put on a national blacklist. You go from first having access to things like public schools for your kids and priority lines at hospitals, all the way down. When you get ranked down, 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 down to the bottom, you're forced out of work, public services, and more. Now in China, since phone addiction and streaming culture has become such an important part of people's lives, they've instituted the six-tiered rating system, officially called health points, kind of like HP. If you're a normal person, then you start out with 100 points, and if you're famous, you get to start out with 120. Depending on what you do wrong in the eyes of the Chinese government, you lose points and features of your app until you're completely banned. Here's what's banned: first of all, promoting unhealthy views on relationships. For those of you that might be under the idea or impression that China is some progressive socialist paradise. 
Not only does the government try and restrict and punish LGBT content in China, but anything that isn't the government norm in China is banned. Remember, the Chinese government banned effeminate men from TV. They really don't like anything that challenges their norm. Also, anything that the government deems vulgar is now banned. That'll get you to lose points. Now, what is that? Well, apparently, if I scroll through Douyin, it should be everything that pops up. Whatever they want vulgarity to mean, I suspect it has to do with anything critical of the government. Things that are on the list are sexual innuendos, don't make any eggplant jokes, pseudoscience, which is very, very ironic since the Chinese government keeps promoting traditional Chinese medicine with cures such as tiger penis and rhino horn. You know what else is banned? The promotion of abnormal beauty standards. That's kind of weird because this is a country that has made face filters and abnormal beauty standards par for the course. If you go through any Chinese media, you're gonna see what abnormal beauty standards look like. This is the country that invented it. Anyway, also what's banned is violation of public order and morals. Oh, now, now it becomes a little more transparent, doesn't it? This obviously means don't speak out against the government. These are all considered moderate infractions. Chinese people have long been skirting the rules for some time now. I mean, the people are not stupid. If the government is going to ban all forms of things they deem unacceptable, people still find a way to get around it. This particular trend took off in China where women just sell cars. That's all that's happening here. There's no reason to look any further into this. It's just women selling cars. I swear, there's nothing else happening. Anyway, if you do any of these silly things, like be too sexy or too weird, or just not what the government wants, you lose your points. The first rank down, let's call it ranking down from A to B tier. When you're in B tier, you can't enter rankings for streamers. And that's kind of like a, a list on Douyin, like TikTok, to see who's popular, like who's the most popular streamers. You're not gonna be on that list anymore. Also, you're gonna get recommended less to people's feeds. And in this day and age where the algorithm is God, that's kind of devastating. Also, if you rank down to B ranking, you can only do 15 PKs per day. Now, what's a PK, you might ask? Well, it's a dystopian nightmare where you go up against another streamer in split screen mode and you get to see who gets more gifts. I'm not even joking. You go up against someone, do something to make the crowd happy and they give you more gifts, which is actually money. This has led to alcohol poisoning, massive social implications across China, and an entire genre of live streams where people threaten and swear at each other to see who is more demeaning. That's not banned, by the way. If you rank down to C tier, you get recommended even less to people's feeds, and you cannot use the PK function anymore at all. Let's say you are simply just too sexy or you're not quite what the government likes, then you go all the way down, falling in free fall down to D tier. And this is where it gets devastating. You can't get gifts anymore. This is the lifeblood of Chinese streamers. You know the dystopian clips where you see a ton of Chinese streamers under bridges and like living on the street and becoming homeless? But homeless people under bridges, live streaming en masse and earning money through these fake gifts that people give online. All you need is a smartphone, one of those beauty ring lights that goes along with it, and of course, a battery pack or two to keep yourself up and running. These people rely on digital gifts, and those digital gifts are then in turn redeemed for real money. If you take that away from someone, you've just taken their job. Finally, F tier, the bottom of the barrel. You got no account, you get banned. Now keep in mind, you could just be A or B tier and still get the cops showing up on the street or at your house or whatever during your stream and taking you away if you have ever said anything against the government. This doesn't pertain to the point system. If you said, uh, I hate the CCP or I think the current Chinese leadership needs to be reformed, they will just show up and take you away. You're not gonna get downgraded, you're just out. If you ever complain about the government in any capacity in China, you're done. Like, bye-bye. A famous streamer got removed and disciplined for showing a tank cake, which was thought to be alluding to Tiananmen Square Massacre, which no one can prove that it was. 
Anyway, the Chinese government started to figure out what was going on in these streams and they decided that they were gonna have their cake and eat it too. They want people to waste their entire lives on live streams and phone addiction. They actually do want this. The Chinese government loves this. It's by design. If everyone's spending like 10 hours plus a day on their phone, then there's no way that anyone's gonna have any sort of uprising against the government in China. Anyway, the government does love that. They love the phone addiction thing. But what they don't love is Chinese people making it look like to the rest of the world that they have some sort of loose, morally bankrupt society because that's what it's starting to look like. They're sick of people making fun of the insane adoption of face filters, which are pretty much default in China now. Like to the point where it's warped people's perception of reality like permanently. Like I'm not even joking, this dude used to look weird. He was called Snake Spirit Boy. He used to make the news because he looked so ridiculous and abused the face filter so much. But I'd say Snake Spirit Boy has become the norm at this point. By the way, did I forget to mention who enforces all of these new rules on the Chinese internet? That is Chinese government run AI. China's mad push for AI integration into everything means that if you broke the rules, it's probably some random AI that decided so. Now, before you think that this is some moral victory, you have to actually understand what the Chinese government is trying to do here. This is about control. It's not relevant if you agree with some of the decisions or not. The be all and end all is that the Chinese government wants full control over every single life in the country, actually outside of the country too. It's not about purifying society. It's about knowing where, when, how, who, and why everyone is at all times. And it really is as bad as it sounds. Whether that be people in real life captured on one of China's 700 million surveillance cameras, and yes, I said 700 million, or wanting to control people as they now live online more and more, it's all the same. It's just about control. Although China's way ahead of schedule on the whole end of the world dystopia and future of the internet led by an authoritarian government type of thing, are we not headed down the same path in the rest of the world? I asked you guys in the last video about how much screen time you had. How long are you spending on your phone every day? And a huge chunk of people were eight hours plus per day. Now that's still behind a lot of China, but by how much at this point? But here's the deal. The first thing I did to reclaim my life, my real life, I should say, my real life existence was to stop short form media. I think TikTok and Instagram reels and YouTube shorts, that kind of stuff are probably the worst thing to ever exist. And that's what we're talking about today. Douyin is TikTok. This is the OG. This is what started China's kind of social collapse. As soon as I stopped scrolling through short form media, my screen time went down from four hours per day to one hour. If you do the math, I mean, that is an insane amount of time. Four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28 hours per week was being spent on a phone. That's one day per week. When I dropped that down to an hour after stopping short form media, I saw immediate improvements in my mental health. And no joke, I started to remember things better. Like normal things that felt like they were on the tip of my tongue that I could never get out. I felt like I could retrieve those memories again. This stuff is bad. I'm not joking. This isn't some doomer nonsense. This stuff is truly bad. And I'm seeing what it's doing to China. It's so bad that I feel like I gotta make a whole video about it. If you learn something or you enjoy this content, I highly recommend you subscribe because guess what? I'm almost at a million subscribers. Please help me get there. And I'd really, really appreciate it if you did that. Also, I have a live show every single Friday called The China Show. It's where I talk about all China's current events, the newest stuff that's coming out of China, both news and entertainment, and all that good stuff in between. So I definitely recommend you go check that out as well. And if you wanna throw me a couple bucks on Patreon, I really appreciate it as well. Thank you very much and I'll catch you on the next one.